I know you guys are so tired of me talking about the gut and how it's ground zero for your health. I'm gonna talk about it again, so bear with me. But this time, we're gonna talk about the connection between your gut and how you feel, your emotional well-being, and there's such a connection. In older systems of medicine, Ayurveda, Chinese medicine, even others, they actually dealt with the gut. When somebody had symptoms of anxiety, depression, or any other mental health type issue, they already knew. And why they may not have known all the science that we know today, they had a feeling and understanding that something was going on there. That's why when we look at acupuncture, for example, many of the points for anxiety or depression are actually gut points when it comes to doing acupuncture. All right, well, I'm gonna break this down for us so you can understand it in maybe a very simple way. And I'm hoping it'll motivate you to get your gut checked, especially if you're having feelings of sadness, worry, depression, so much more that we all go through, right? So let's break it down. First of all, what's the gut doing? It's not just about digesting your food or going to the bathroom or having great abs. Well, we all want that, trust me. But it's also about that factory in the belly, this entire factory of microbes that are digesting, doing their job, communicating with almost every other system in your body. Think about that. You have messengers sitting in here telling your body how to feel. That's a lot of power sitting right here. Well, those microbes, as we know today from all the science and from all the research, are regulating things like dopamine, serotonin, norepinephrine, and so much more. All these neurotransmitters that dictate whether we're going to have anxiety or depression or we're going to sail through the day super happy. Now, I have seen over and over again in practice how someone will tell me that they've gone from being sad and depressed to feeling peaceful and happy all by working on the gut. What's going on there? Well, I'm gonna break it down for you. This is what we have seen over and over and over again in our practices at Center Spring MD and Whole Plus, where patients do the work and the body at the end of the day is all connected. This is where the science and the spirit comes together. So here's the science. For those of you that have candida, which is an overgrowth of yeast in the gut, which by the way, is an epidemic, right? And I talk a lot about candida in this video right here. We know that candida is linked to depression and anxiety. It actually triggers brain fog and it triggers sort of this overall sense of not being motivated, having trouble with attention and focus. In fact, in our kids, you know, with all the inattention and ADHD and ADD that we see out there, one of the common gut factors that I find frequently is candida or an overgrowth of yeast. In the adults, I do see it in the form of depression and anxiety. Now, there are a couple of different things going on there. We are sometimes genetically prone to swing towards candida. Those of you with the MTHFR gene, especially the SNP of C677T, we know that that subtype has a tendency to have candida. Aside from that, we also know that our environment is sort of candida producing, for lack of a better word. We know, for example, that the toxic load swings the body towards a higher candida state. We know that when hormones change in women, especially a drop in progesterone, there's a higher candida state. We know that when cortisol goes up in women, children, or men, again, a higher candida state. So again, what typically happens is that you go to the doctor, you feel not so great, and you're given an anxiety or depression medication without a lot of discussion around what's happening with the gut. And while it's not wrong to take those medications, right? We want this integrative approach. We don't wanna take them without understanding the full picture of your health. So do you or do you not have candida? That is a question to ask when it comes to gut health. Let's do another one. You know, there's so many of these patterns that I see over and over again. Fat malabsorption is an epidemic right now. I get so many of these stool tests back where people are simply spilling fat. You know that's you if you are having to go to the bathroom more than two times a day, meaning looser, softer bowel movements. Sorry, I'm not trying to be gross, just trying to be realistic. Those are signs of fat malabsorption. If you're having a lot of weird rashes, itchy skin, dry skin, losing hair, again, 
a sign of fat malabsorption. And if you're struggling with your hormones, you may also have fat malabsorption because at the end of the day, fat is the building block for all of our hormones, men and women both. We talk a lot about fat malabsorption and hormones in this video, check it out to learn more. So fat malabsorption, when it comes to how we feel, I see so many symptoms of emotional issues when there's fat malabsorption. There's a lot more anxiety. There's a lot more inattention and inability to focus. There is definitely, most definitely brain fog. So again, this is a very physical concept, all rooted in the gut, tied to how we feel. In Ayurveda, they made that connection. They said that when there was fat malabsorption, people were more vada, more disconnected from their selves. They lived in this airspace up here, and that in turn triggered anxiety. People that had issues with candida, for example, they described as very kapha, and that in turn triggered depression. So all of these systems of medicine were able to recognize early on with different language that the gut was connected to how we feel. Now let's flip this for a second. Actually, let's do one more pattern before we move into the spirit, which I love as well. So SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, right? You guys have heard that. We've talked a lot about that on this channel, but SIBO is another gut pattern that is prevalent today. Again, quality of food, our environment, stress, you name it, there are different reasons for that to be taking place. SIBO can also present with emotional feelings of worry, depression, anxiety, and trouble focusing. In children, for example, we see a lot of Clostridia overgrowth, which is a bacteria that has led to many behaviors of overstimulation and dopamine overproduction. So some of the autistic-like behaviors that we see in some children. We have also seen an overgrowth of other bacteria that in turn lead to things like being aggressive or raging or anger and so much more. At the end of the day, it's all connected and is connected in a couple of different ways. It's first connected by those microbiome, all those bacteria in your belly. It's connected by the ability of the body to digest food effectively and absorb protein and fat, which determine how we feel. And it's also connected in the integrity of that gut lining, because if it's not working well, we're losing our nutrients. You don't get the B vitamins to produce the dopamine to make you feel good. You don't get the magnesium to soothe your serotonin to make you feel calm. So hopefully this is making sense at a very physical, scientific chemistry level of how the gut and your emotions are connected. But I'm gonna flip it on you and talk about something else. Let's go into the spirit, all right? Bear with me here, because it's important. And again, it's a way for you to help you identify and diagnose yourself. Now remember, we talk a lot about chakras and meridians when it comes to Chinese and Ayurvedic medicine, right? Or even energy systems of medicine. And here's what they say, and this is where I love the interconnections. Those of you that have a lot of issues in your gut, have issues with worry, and you're rooting and really feeling confident in yourself, affecting your emotional well being. So they would diagnose that more from an energetic standpoint, saying, hey, the gut chakra, right? The root chakra is off, something's going on here. They would then come up and say, wait a minute, there's something going on with the heart. The heart might be blocked, leading to depression. In fact, in Chinese medicine, the heart meridian, which they would diagnose from your face and your tongue, and we do in practice through our own technology, is tied to depression and anxiety. So they would be able to pick that up energetically, right? And all of that would then in turn influence gut health, liver health, and so much more. Let's do one more. The liver holds anger according to Chinese medicine. So if you have experienced grief, trauma, betrayal, then you are storing, oftentimes without knowing it, especially women, we have a lot of repressed anger, you're storing all of that in the liver, which in older systems of medicine is considered a part of the gut. You may not realize that that's what's happening, but over time you start to have gut issues, you start to have issues with your hormones, and in turn, you start to have issues with how you feel, and it starts to become more obvious. So the chakra system, the meridian system are tied to organs, which in turn dictate our emotions, which are all intricately connected. 
So whether we look ground up, right? The ground is the chemistry, the science, the physicality of you and what's happening in the gut, influencing how you feel up here, or whether we look up down, which is how we feel influencing our energy and our energetic body, in turn, our emotional body, and then influencing our physical body. At the end of the day, it's all connected. And that's the whole plus way to help you understand that both the science and the spirit have to come together in these different diagnostic patterns to help you get to the place where you can heal. All right, I post new videos every week. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We're gonna keep digging in into all of these concepts, looking at both the science and the spirit.